Hey, quilters, welcome to AccuQuilt Live. I'm Pam Heller, AccuQuilt's cutting expert. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, we have a special guest host again this week, Mr. Brock. Super duper Brock is joining us. <laughs> How are you? That was rude. <laughs> it was, it was. But you're happy to be here? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. So nice they didn't have me back twice. I know. I feel like you did okay last week, so we thought it was good to bring you back. So yeah, yeah. thanks for joining us today. All right, where is everyone watching from? Do you know, Mr. Brock? Everywhere. Everywhere, all the people. Everywhere, everything, all at once. There we go. Let's showcase the new projects from our intro video. First up is a pillow from Barbara B. Uh, Barbara B is clearly a huge Yellowstone fan. Brock tells me this because she made this pillow about Beth Dutton. So I've never seen Yellowstone, but I assume Beth Dutton is a great character. Uh, yeah, she's Kevin Costner's wife. Oh, yeah. okay. There you go. Look at how cute that is and great geometric shapes around the edge. Next, we have Mary B. She made this really fun turkey pot holder and it's super cute. Okay, so Brock, do you see some of the shapes that we have? Uh, I see a lot of half square triangles. Yes, and maybe some quarter square triangles there in the corner. I love it. I think it's great. And last up, we have Wendy L. All right, Brock, what block is this? Uh, that's the wheel of the carpenter. That is the wheel of the carpenter, and I love her border on it with the tiny squares. Great job today. Hey, quilters, don't forget you can share your finished projects with us, and they can be part of our intro video. All right, today is all about the ghost star of the East Eye. So here is the block that it traditionally makes. Okay, look at how pretty that is. But today we are making blocks from the Go Cosmic Bloom wall hanging, which is this pattern, or this wall hanging here. It's a free pattern available at AccuQuilt.com. Be sure and download the pattern before your die arrives. All right, Brock, do you like the solid block or do you like it broken up like this? I like the solid block. Do you? Yeah. How come? I, I don't like broken things. <laughs> okay. I don't know, I just think it looks uh, like cleaner, nicer, nicer okay. lines and stuff. And just, yeah. Okay. I like this one because it breaks it up and it has sashing. So um, it takes that block and we're gonna talk about how to create it. So kind of different things, different folks, right? Things that we like. So here is my photo of the day. Just random fabrics that I picked out to try and choose what to make my colorway for my block. So the question of the day is, what color would you make your Star of the East block? So um, I'm going to choose winter colors, but Brock, what would you choose? I would go with a navy blue and a silver and a white because that's the colors of the New York Yankees who are in first place in the AL East and Aaron Judge hit his 60th home run last night and is two away from breaking the American League record. Didn't know you were going to get that at AccuQuilt Live today. Um, I'm a huge Yankees fan. Brock and I, that's the only thing we have in common is we both love the Yankees, but that's good. So you would make it in Yankee colors, right? Yeah. All right. Any so of my favorite sports teams. Any of your, like maybe Nebraska? Yeah. Yeah, I'm a fan of them as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, nice, nice red, white, and black. it would be good. Okay. So in the comments section, what color would you make our star of the East Eye and why, right? Maybe you're choosing it for your favorite team. All right, now this month's die to try is the Go Whirling Star. And it's only available to the end of the month or while supplies last, and we have a limited supply of these dies. So get yours today. And Brock, are you a fan of this block? Uh, I do like that one, yes. I do like this one as well. Someone yesterday posted on social media, they made it in Halloween fabric and I about went nuts. What color would you make the Whirling Star? Uh, like a dark, like a charcoal gray. Just shades of gray? Yes, but not 50, like six. <laughs> or four. Or four, sure. Okay, all right. All right, today we have launch bundles. First up is the Go Bob nine inch finished die bundle. It includes the Star of the East, 
uh, which finishes to nine inches, and the Road to Fortune, which is the block we made last week, and a six by 24 cutting mat. Next up is the Go Block on Board Favorites, nine inch die bundle. This has so many great dies. It has Star of the East, Road to Fortune, Crossroads, Glorified Nine Patch, Starry Path, Setting Triangles, and two cutting mats. So this is a great bundle with all of those nine inch finished dies, okay? And before we talk about what we're gonna give away, let's talk about the dies that are in our bundle because I have samples. So here is Star of the East. This is what we're doing today. This is Road to Fortune, which is what we made last week. All the scrappiness, it's truly, truly one of my favorite blocks. This is Brock, do you know? Yeah, it's the London Underground. It is. Crossroads. Let's go Crossroads. And it is the London Underground. All right, what's this one? Uh, the, the Glorified Nine Patch. Yes, ding, ding, winner, winner. All right, and the last one. We have many star dies. Which one is this? That's the Path of Stars. It is the Path of Stars, okay? So today I'm gonna to give away one of our Go Star of the East dies, so be sure and register for future events on the AccuCult event page for your chance to win. By registering, you'll receive all event emails, and that way you're never gonna miss an exciting tutorial. And uh, Super Duper Brock will announce the winner at the end of our show. All right, Gina Jempasa is truly one of my favorite designers. We have such talented designers here at AccuQuilt. And she created this pattern um, using the Ghost Star of the East Eye. And it's called, what's the name of this pattern? Cosmic I think it's Bloom. Cosmic Bloom, yep. Oh, look at us, between us we now. All right, so can we look at this for a second? And, oh, I'm gonna grab my block here. Okay, so here is the Star of the East block. And the die helps you create quarter sections that you're gonna to sew together, all right? If you missed our launch party, it's on our YouTube channel. You can go back and we show you how to cut and sew one of these dies together. Um, we did a video for it on our website. So this has the four sections sewn together. But what Gina did was, which I thought was brilliant, she created quarter sections and then broke them up with sashing and cornerstones. And the sashing, we're gonna cut five inch strips by one and a half inch, and then these are one and a half inch squares, and this is gonna finish to one inch square, and this is gonna finish to four and a half by one, okay? So just enough sashing to kind of break up the block, which I think is just fabulous. And it's a super fast, easy project. Some of you are gonna say, ooh, that's kind of a complicated die, but really it's not. We're gonna show you how to put them together. And you only need 16 of our little quarter sections to make the entire project, all right? So like our other block and board or bob dies, all the shapes you need to make an entire block are in one die board, okay? So let's take a look at the die. All right, so first of all, it's on a six by 24 die board, so it will fit through all of our cutters, including the Gomi. The shapes are screen printed with the letters to help you keep track of your pieces. And what did we cut off, Brock? The dog ears. The dog ears. So from this point here to this point here are quarter inch seam allowances. And then look right here, we have specialized dog ears on these shapes, okay? So think about, since it finishes to nine inches, think about pairing it with nine inch setting triangles, other bob dies, or the nine inch cube, okay? All right, so the original pattern, oh, I'm gonna need this, <laughs> um, uses yellow and two shades of green. I wanna change it up to be a seasonal winter block, so I used our free online quilting tool called Go Quilt to change the colorway. It's really easy to use and it has a tutorial to help you get started. And basically what I did was um, I found the fabric that I wanted 
and I took a picture of it and uploaded it so that I could see my project in the finished colors and it was fabulous, okay? All right, so before we lay our fabric out and talk about our dye, um, Brock, tell us what people, what colors they would make it in and maybe their favorite sports teams because we can talk about that today. Yeah, getting a lot of replies coming in. Uh, Dambris is just, just flat orange, just a nice orange color, maybe like a just sunset orange. kind of look. Yeah. Uh, Mary says, uh, Mary's going after Erica's heart. She goes purple and lavenders. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, See, so we've got Noreen. We've got a lot of people saying red, white, and blue. Just going, you know, oh. nice, nice big America colors. There you go. So that'd, that'd definitely be a popular one. That would be. Quilts of And Valor, uh, we've got Carol, uh, I think it's uh, Reichlich, who okay. says uh, black, gold, and white because they're the colors of the Boston Bruins. Do now, we like the Bruins? No, we cannot condone the making of any Boston sports team colors. Oh, amen. So There will be no speaking of Boston in this room. But the Bruins, huh? But there has to be other ones that are black and yellow, black and yellow. Yeah, every, every team in Pittsburgh is black and gold. There we go. There we go. Okay, so be sure in the comments section, let us know what color would you make the star of the East. All right, so now we're going to lay out our fabric, and it's super easy. Okay, it just has three shapes, half square triangles and two different sides, sizes, sorry. Remember, when you look at a bob die, look at the block that it's gonna make, obviously, but then look at the individual elements. This has two sizes of half square triangles. So at home, I measure the finished block and then with a Sharpie, I write on the back the finish sizes of the squares. So half square triangles, they finish to whatever size square. That way when I'm working on a project and maybe I'm trying to create my own project, then I say, oh, maybe I need, um, I'm making stuff up, two and a half inch half square triangles. Then I can look here on my bob die. If it's not something I can find in my cube, then I can find them here on my bob dies, which I think is so slick. And these, what shape would you call this, Brooke? Uh, an and obtuse triangle? Oh, let's call it that. An obtuse triangle. Yeah, that works. Is that not what it is? I don't know, a, sure. A wide open mouth, isn't that an obtuse triangle? Yeah, <laughs> I know my geometry. Okay, I didn't do so well in geometry, but we can go with that. All right, now the shapes aren't directional, so you can fan fold your project. For this project, Shape A and B are going to be, oh, here, look. <laughs> there we go. Gina, I love your colors, but this is the colors we're going to make. Um, they just need to be purple and white, okay? So I follow the pattern instructions. I subcut my fabric, and I'm laying purple and white, okay, over A and B. And then shape C is all the same, and I'm gonna use the light blue and the dark blue. Did you like this colorway, Brock? Uh, which one? The one I'm making? Yeah. Okay, good. I was a little worried about that in there for a minute, okay? All right, remember you can always cut up to six layers of cotton with your dies, and now we're gonna cut some shapes. All right. Oh, I'm gonna move my iron and turn on my cutter. All right, Brock, while we're cutting shapes, do you wanna tell us what people's colors they were gonna make it out of? Yeah, I can do that. A lot of people uh, are calling for holiday themed uh, patterns. So a lot of reds and greens for Christmas, a lot of the browns and oranges and reds oh, for, for, for autumns, for fall, for Thanksgiving time. So okay, that's a good um, idea. Those are, those are a lot of ones. Let's see, Yvette uh, likes the royal blue and gold color combination. Oh, those Bad. were my high school colors. Oh, well, there you go. You can make one of those. There you go. Uh, see, okay. Megan M likes to go for jewel tones. Ooh, bejeweled tones. That sounds lovely. And also, I'm being told that uh, that shape is the elongated half diamond. Who said that? Barbara Harper. Oh, she knows. She would know. <laughs> She's one of our experts. Thank you, Barbara. What's it called? Elongated half diamond. Okay. Um, I like obtuse triangle, but sure, okay. All right, so now I've cut my fabric. Thanks for watching, Barbara. 
All right, here we go. We're going to see Barbara um, in Paducah, or not Paducah, in um, Houston at Quilt Festival. All right, so here is my pro tip, okay? The center shape C's are the same shape, but you're going to sew different half square triangles to each color. It helps you keep track of your block. So this light blue is gonna be sewn to white and the dark blue is gonna be sewn to the purple. And then when you come to put your blocks together, then this square here is gonna be purple. Does that make sense? Okay, all right, so we're gonna lay out our block. And while we lay out our block, um, let me remind you that Eric and I have a special event tomorrow at 12 noon central time. It is a recap of the Des Moines Quilt Festival. A whole bunch of our team went and we had a great time. Be sure to register for the event on our, register on the event page for the chance to win prizes. Okay? Yeah. All right, so let's lay some pieces out. Um, the block is divided into two halves. They are different in how you sew them, all right? So we're gonna start down here and lay out this first half and then we're gonna talk about how to sew our shapes. All right, so we're gonna take our little pretty, pretty blue here, okay? We're gonna lay it like this and then we're gonna take our shape B, our white shape B, okay? And we're gonna sew it here and look at how perfect this is gonna line up together because we've cut off the dog ears. So from this point here to this point here is that perfect quarter inch seam, okay? And um, I'm gonna do a couple of them because while we're making blocks, we should do that. Don't you think, Brock? While we're sewing. Might as well. We might as well. Okay, and then we'll add some of our blue blocks together. Okay, Ooh, make sure they're all going the right direction. All right, so I'm gonna start by sewing this shape B to a shape C, all right? And while I do that, Brock can tell us um, about people's colors. So Julie Kiplani uh, says blue, dark blue, and gold because those are the colors of uh, Hanukkah. Oh, there you go. Good one. Hanukkah is coming. Uh, Karen Luther uh, says uh, the colors of her guest room, which are green, peach, and cream. Oh, this would be pretty in a guest room. Very interesting. And also, I'm being told by uh, Jackie Corrado. Hi, Jackie. To, uh, stop watching sports when I should be quilting. And to that, I say maybe you should start watching sports while you quilt. Okay, and in your defense, I watch sports while I quilt. Yeah, you can do both. I can do both. Multitask. I can watch the Yankees play. Hi, Jackie, how are you? All right. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to press my seams open. And do you know why we press our seams open, Brock? Uh, so it lays flatter and to avoid any uh, bulking situation. Bulking situation, like you've been to the gym too much, yep. So we're gonna come right here and bulk. And here's the question we get every week. Am I using steam in my iron? Brock? Uh, no. You are not? No, we do not. No, no steam. How come? Uh, it uh, messes with fabric, it warps it. It does, okay. All right. All right, so now I have sewn my C to my B, all right? And now we're gonna add this beautiful, beautiful dark blue shape C to the outside. Oh, is that right? Hold on, keep going. Oh, no, see, I had to read the instructions. Before we sew it together, we're gonna sew the dark purple to the top of this shape, and then we're gonna sew them together. See, look at how it's gonna work. Okay, I know I always make sure that it's working right. Oh, did I do this wrong? Brock, your job, you have one job, and make sure I don't sew it together wrong. How is this my job? I don't know. My job is to sit here, be funny, and read comments. Okay, well, my job apparently was to sew that wrong, because look at me. I was too busy thinking about Yankee colors. Okay, hold on, this is why we have Seam Ripper. 
Okay? Do you see what I did wrong here? Now, huh. sometimes in life, it works out okay because now it still doesn't look. Ah, look at us. Okay, hold on. I'm going to rip these out. Okay. While, you're, do, while you're doing that, I'll, I'll read a few more comments from people. That'd be lovely. Okay, so uh, Jennifer Alexander initially said uh, yellow and black would look great together, which I will color, so eh, I don't know about that. Uh, but she said uh, purple, black, white with a bit of gold trim for the Baltimore Ravens, which I am fully on board are for. Are we on board with that? We like okay. the Ravens. Ravens are good. Uh, a lot of Packers fans, so a lot of green and white and oh, yes. uh, for people. Which are is, you uh, a Packers fan? I don't mind the Packers. Uh, I tried to get Aaron Rodgers in fantasy football. Didn't happen, but that's okay. Uh, see a lot of uh, let's see pink, lavender, uh, a lot of pinks and blue combinations. I'm seeing from people, which is always a very nice uh, aesthetically. A, a pinks and blue, like for babies. Colors, yeah. Uh, okay. Turquoise, gray, and rust says Lynn Dean. I'd oh, be, uh, a good. I like a rust color. I do like a good rust color. Okay. Ooh, um, we, got, we got a Seahawks fan as well. So oh, blue and go green. Hawks! I like Seahawks. That one's for you. I know, just for us. Uh, Okay, so did you see how I totally did that wrong? It's okay. This is how we fix it. Okay, so I, I had the right shape here. It was how I laid out my shape C. And this is why we lay stuff out, because see, now you're going to see how it's going to go together beautifully. Okay, so I'm going to sew all of these pieces together correctly now. And, Barack, do we have any questions? Uh, yeah, we do. Uh, let's okay, see. let's answer those. If you, uh, so uh, Jonelle asks, if you steam before you cut your shapes, if you steam your fabric before you cut your shapes, is that okay? Yeah, because sometimes you get those wrinkles in there. Right? Go with it. Yes, we get wrinkles. So yes, I would say that. Okay, and then kind of a, from a dip from someone else, from uh, Peggy, she asked, do you use steam on a finished block? Do I use steam? Or could on you a, like when uh, like oh, once it's done? Could you use like a steam iron? Um, yes, okay. I give it a good press, but I never none seems none steam even then. None, huh? None. I only use steam when I'm doing like collage quilts and I want that wet steam. But no, when I'm done, I just use a really hot iron and press that down. Those are great questions. Okay. <laughs> All right, look, we sewed them together correctly. Now we can press them open, and now I can sew my next blocks. I want you to know, yesterday, while I watched some sports, I sewed all of these pieces together in like 20 minutes and did not do it wrong once. So there's hope for you. It's not difficult at all. Just keep track of your pieces. Wouldn't you say that's like the secret? I would, I would think that'd be about step, you know, one or two. Yeah, keep track of your pieces. Okay, now I'm gonna sew the C to the A. I do feel like maybe that's my fault. I took the sticky notes off of the table earlier, and I know that's your way of organizing everything. You know how I am about so sticky notes. That, that, that's on me, that's on me. I have sticky notes in many colors, even. I, I tell ya. All right, so where, what else are people Saying colors they would do. Uh, yeah. So I've got one more question for you before I get back okay. to that. Uh, so Joyce asks. Hey Joyce. Uh, I'm considering getting an AccuQuilt and find your videos very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but she cannot make up her mind which one to purchase. Oh, Brock, do you have a say on this? Uh, well, I mean, I would, I would think the Ready, Set, Go is like the perfect thing for any beginner. Anyone yes. who's really going to get going on this thing. Because what's in our Ready, Set, Go? Uh, you get the Go fabric cutter, and you get the, is that the flying geese? Is that the dot? Uh, no, that's with the Go Big. No, but that's the Go Big. Okay. I, what size cube? Uh, the 8-inch cube. Yes, and a strip die that finishes, or that cuts what size strips? The 2.5-inch strip die, which cuts to two, finishes to 2 inches? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great idea. I would totally get the Ready, Set, Go. Okay, now we're back on track. Look at our pieces. Aren't they great? Now I'm going to sew the A and the C and the B and the C units together, just like that, just like the graphics show us. And they're all going to line up because 
I've used a quarter inch seam allowance and I'm following those little dog ears. Yeah, ready, set, go, ultimate fabric starter kit. We have lots of videos on how to use your cube. Today we're gonna show you some strip dye magic. We have lots of, lots of resources. All right, don't forget in the comment section, let us know what colors you'd make your Star of the East and if you have questions for Brock. Yeah, just for me. Just for Brock. He knows all the answers to the questions. In case you were wondering. Uh, so let's see, uh, we have a uh, San Francisco native gal would we'll do it in coral colors. Ooh. Surprised you didn't go uh, like an orange and a black for the Giants or a green and gold for the A's. You would, yeah. I'm a big A's fan, okay. Uh, see, Martha Campbell would go with the, the blue and the gold. Constance okay. would go green and gold. Uh, see, we have red, white, blue, green, blue, white, white, green, yellow, white? white, yellow, sorry, light yellow, denim blue and gray, or a very interesting combination of olive green, rust and mustard. Okay, tell us why you would choose that. Who, who said that? Because we need to know why you would choose those colors. Because that is an odd combination. I do like the idea of denim with it. Can you cut denim with our dyes, Brock? Yes, you can. How many layers should you cut? Uh, no more than one. Yeah, just one it's layer at a thick, time. Pretty thick fabric. Pretty thick fabric, yeah. Okay. Oh, Tammy, oh, Tammy DeBeau goes, go all New England teams, Patriots, Red Sox, Bruins, Celtics. No. <laughs> no. 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 Okay, I'm going to give him a little press here. Okay, here's half of my block. So the question is, besides sports, why is an AccuQuilt fabric cutter better than rotary cutting? So, Brock, why would you say? Uh, it's faster. Faster. You can cut a lot more. And is it going to be accurate? Yeah. Every single time. Cut up to six layers. 90% faster than rotary cutters or scissors. So... What used to take you an hour to cut out, you can cut out now in less than six minutes. Okay? Hey, quilters, don't forget we have launch bundles available, including the Go Bob 9-inch finished die bundle, which has everything you need to get started with the Go Star of the East, Go Road to Fortune, and a cutting mat. And today I'm giving away one of our Go Star of the East dies. Be sure and register for future events on the AccuQuilt event page for your chance to win. All right. Now we're gonna do the other half. We did the, this half, now we're doing the other half, okay? We're gonna start, there we go. We're gonna start here with a C and then a white shape A, okay? And I'm gonna make sure that I lay them out correctly. I thought I'd try something new, okay? And don't forget, quilters, we, if you have questions, be sure and let us know in the comments section. It's like you read my mind, Pam. I was just about to say, I've got some questions for you. Excellent. Uh, so one question uh, from Nina was, does the Ready, Set, Go starter kit include the cutting mats? Oh, what is the answer to that, Brock? Yes. Yes, because what happens without a cutting mat? If you Absolutely try to use... nothing. Absolutely nothing, yeah. Uh, let's see, we had a uh, question from Naomi. What kind of tray is Pam ironing on with her little iron? <gasps> this little gray mat. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's show them. Hold on here. I'm laying out my blocks so I make sure I sew it together correctly. I can only sew it wrong once. Um, this is our wool pressing mat. It's available on our website. And our little steam iron is as well. And I use this right next to my sewing machine at home, and it's perfect every single time. We also have a little shovel iron, okay? Don't get the wool mat wet. Do you know why? It will not smell good. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, ask me how I know that. Okay. How do you know that? I got it wet. And then it smelled bad. All right, so now we're gonna sew our A to our C. And now we have a white shape A, whereas on this half we had the purple shape A. All right, any other questions there, Mr. Brock? Uh, I'm loving all these color combinations. 
Yeah, we do have a few more questions. Okay. One from uh, Diana Kidd. How long do you need to wait when using spray adhesive before you can start quilting? How long do you have to wait? Oh, listen. Oh, like for applique. I would think so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, right away. I just wave it around, let it dry for a minute or so, whatever the instructions say. And then, yeah, you can just cut right away. Spray adhesive. Have you ever used spray adhesive, Brock? I have not. We have some over there in the drawer. I'll show you how to use it later. Okay. I use it for um, when I'm doing embroidery. I just give it a little spritz and it holds my shapes in place while the embroidery machine does all the work. I love to watch embroidery machine and men work. Okay, what's your other question there, Mr. Brock? Uh, let's see, we had a question from Karen Jones. Uh, do you starch fabric before cutting? Okay, the answer to that is no. The reason is, it's just an extra step. I press my fabric before I cut to get the wrinkles out and such, but I know people who are prominent, prominent starching people. So I'm gonna tell you if you're gonna starch things, do it before you cut, right? It doesn't make a difference in the dye. If you're cutting on the lengthwise grain, you're gonna get that tight cut. And I feel like sometimes people starch because they wanna get that good clean cut, okay? Mm -hmm. So I don't personally starch, ever. No starch for Pam. No, sometimes they use sizing because it smells good, but no. I try not to get my fabric wet because <laughs> then it just pulls in all the different directions. I'm so surprised at how much uh, odor plays into quilting these days. Because? Wool mat well, smell yeah, bad? You can't, can't get your wool mat. You, know, you, you use a certain kind of spray because it smells good. I don't know. It's a lot to think about. There is. And snacks. Well, yes. Yeah, when you're snacking with that. Okay. Right, uh, so we had a question from Susie who asks, is it okay to use basting glue before sewing? Yes. Well, there you go. Yeah, I use basting glue before I, sometimes before I sew um, binding on down, sew it down. I learned a cool thing. When I am taking two and a half inch strips, uh, sew them to the back, bring them to the front of my project, Somebody taught me to use glue sticks. Just give it a little glue stick along the way and then it will hold your um, binding down and then I use bindy clips. But, you know, all that washable glue because you're gonna wash your, it, I would never use it if I was giving it away. But for quilts that we keep at our house, I use that, it's just a little extra step to kind of help me keep that binding flat, yeah. And then when I wash it, because at our house, um, you have to wash quilts because they're not, how does Taylor, they're not soft enough because they're kind of stiff, you know, that fabric before you wash it. All right, so now we have a C and now we have a B. Look at this, moving right along, Brock. Again, in 20 minutes, I cut out all of these pieces and sewed them together. It's not the cutting part that takes the while, right? It's the sewing. Uh, Brock, do you multitask while you watch sports? I multitask while I do pretty much anything. Good for you. Yeah. I would say that's true. When you're here at the office, you're pretty much multitasking all the time. Yeah, I'm trying to do a lot, I'm trying to get a lot done. You're a busy guy here at the office. Do you want to tell people what you do here? No, you don't have to. No, no. Okay. You'll be an enigma. Yeah, I want to stay a mystery. Okay. I, I do hear that you know Santa. Yep, yep, he and I are on have pretty, him on speed dial. pretty good terms. We hang out a lot. Okay. It's important. Uh, so we got some more color combos here. Okay, tell us. Uh, some a lot of sports fans out there, which is great. I uh, can't always agree with the teams that they're fans of, but you know, to, to which their own. Uh, so we got we got some Cowboys fans. Uh, Rose Are Farmer's you a Cowboys a, fan. I'm not a Cowboys fan. I don't. I haven't ever been a Cowboys fan, but I, I always remember that song, that uh, country song. Was it uh, "Mama Don't Let Your Babies Grow Up to Be Cowboys"? Yes. Well, my mom didn't, so that was I'm not a Cowboys. Literally at your house, huh? Yeah. Okay. 
so yeah, so they'd go uh, the silver and blue there. Uh, we got some Chiefs fans out there. So the, oh, the red, City. black, and gold. Uh, one, uh, Laura says, uh, the crimson and cream for the Oklahoma Sooners. Too soon, Laura, too soon. Oh, yeah, that was kind of brutal at our house. So I did take one for the team, though, because Mason has really good friends that are big Oklahoma fans. Okay, now we're going to sew these two sections together. Okay, perfect. All right, tell us other colors. We just had one pop up. Liz, Liz Spears says, uh, roll tide which I can only assume uh, you're also going for the Alabama colors, which, eh. Yes. There's really nothing I can say to disparage them. They're good. <laughs> they uh, but, are uh, good. Jenny Gans says she would make one using Star Wars fabric. And oh. that is a great idea, Jenny. That is a great idea. Do you have a favorite Star Wars movie of all? Brock is our movie trivia guy. Yeah. On Tuesdays, you know, we have movie trivia. Did you guess like, yesterday's Erica's answer or question? Uh, I guessed. I didn't get it right. Who won trivia yesterday? Uh, oh, Katie won. Yeah, Katie won. Those uh, are important things, like yeah. who won trivia? Well, a lot of our questions are uh, who gets like closest to the answer. Yes. So it's not always just about absolutely knowing something. And do you remember what the question was yesterday? Uh, no. Hocus Pocus. Hocus Pocus. How many times was it said during the movie? Hocus Pocus. Twice. Twice. Katie knew. All right, so now I'm sewing my halves. Whoa, whoa are you, you, you just rushed right past. It's like you didn't let me answer what's my favorite Star Wars movie. I oh, mean, sorry, you sorry. You can't set me up for something like that and then <laughs> so cut me sorry. off. Sorry. That's rude. Okay, go for it. So the obvious answer, of course, is Empire Strikes Back. But outside of that, I love Rogue One. Star Wars, uh, 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 Star Wars Story Rogue One is a fantastic film. And the new series, Andor, which is like the prequel it to that, it just tonight. started yesterday. They oh, released yesterday. the first three episodes. I haven't watched it yet, but I'm very much Real looking forward to it. Don't watch it until Brock what happens. Oh, yeah. I have liked the little spinoff sequence. You know, like the Mandalorian. and Yeah. I've yeah. liked those a lot. Ever, ever since they've kind of done, gone more into like the TV streaming side, of that, there's been some really quality Star Wars television out there. I often watch those big long movies while I sew because I've seen them so many times that then I don't have to, you know, I don't have to pay attention. It's not new. I already know what's going on. Okay. All right, here we go. We're going to sew our sections together. Look at how fun this is. Now, super important to make sure that all your sections are the same colorway. Okay, don't mix up the C's. All right, so we're going to sew these and we're going to press our seams open. Now, here's my little tip here. I'm going to make sure that when I'm sewing these, see how these seams, I pressed them open. So right here, they're going to match. That way, when I open my block, look how good they come to that point. Those are important things. If you're going to spend the time and the energy to quilt, you want to make sure your points come together. Yeah, and kind of on, on that, as we're talking about the block a little bit, we had a uh, comment from uh, Susan who says, OK, she's, she's been watching the show and been watching you put this block together. OK. Uh, but she says, because some of the pieces look so much alike, she's having a hard time figuring them out. Uh, is, uh, she may have to. You know, get a little bit extra help on this. Is there anything you could do yes. to help uh, kind Let's of help her. coordinate these a little bit more? Yes. All right. We're gonna we're gonna sew this little half together, and then we're gonna do a little one-on-one -on -one tutorial here, so you get it. Because I feel like if one of our viewers isn't understanding, maybe other ones aren't as well. Okay. And the Star of the East is truly um, back in the day before there was a die for that. You would have to use foundation paper piecing to make it. And it just take you forever. I mean, we cut out all these pieces and we've been talking about sports, okay? So it's taken us a little bit longer. Okay, look. All right, so now we're gonna go back. Hold on, we're gonna press this open. We're gonna press it open so it lays flat. There's just so many seams and that bulk would really get hard and thick, okay? All right. All right, so shall we just lay out one, Brock? 
and show her how we did it? Yeah. Okay. Remember quilters were starting with a half, two halves, okay? Okay, ooh, look, I have a pin right there. I can just jab it in there, okay? And they're different. Shape C's are the same, and every time we sew a light blue to a half square triangle, the small one, it's going to be white. We only ever sew the light blue to the white half square triangles. Yeah, see, are you getting it now? And we only ever sew the dark blue to the purple triangles. So if you're sewing your block together and your light isn't going to the white, you've sewn your block together wrong, okay? So let's lay it out real quick. And I think that that's kind of a big tip, okay? And, oh, here, we have pieces here. Now remember, what is this called again, the shape? What I call it or what its official name Just is? Just tell me what. The, the elongated half uh, diamond. Yeah, that's what Barbara says, she knows stuff. Not the obtuse triangle? Yeah, we're gonna call it that, okay. All C's on the board are identical. It doesn't matter how you rotate them. They're not a directional shape. That's a good question from producer Joe over there. Okay, now because we were creating halves, we want the edges to be straight, right? So we're gonna lay this shape C to a white, small half square triangle. It only goes to white, all right? And then sew that together. And now we have a blue shape C, and look how I can just manipulate these around. I, that's the best part. Okay, and what color do we sew it to, Brock? Only ever? The purple. purple. This is why it helps to have four colors. Okay, that way you know, All right? There's this block. Now, we're gonna build this one the same, and I build it just like it lays in the block, right? So, here we go. And because it's white, we're only gonna use, or because it's light, we're only gonna use the white. The, the trick is making sure that you line up your half square triangles correctly, okay? Because you want a flat edge on both sides, okay? And then we're gonna come here to blue. Oh, here, I'm gonna put this under here. Okay. And this is why I think Gina is brilliant in this block because she just takes all of the guests out of it because you're just making quarter blocks. Okay. So remember, all of these videos live on our Facebook and YouTube pages. So you can come back and watch it over and over and over again on how to put your blocks together. All right, so while I clean up my mess here, I'm gonna put my pieces away over here because we're gonna cut some more stuff. Um, Brock, will you tell us about our blog? Yeah, we have a fantastic blog. We do. Uh, that allows uh, people to get together and see tutorials, patterns, uh, get advice on different uh, patterns or, or yes. blocks or dies or anything that we need. Uh, it's a great way for the community to kind of come together and not just you know learn from us, but learn from each other. There we go. It's a great one. Check out our blog. You can sign up for it at AccuQuilt.com. The last thing you need for this project is the white sashing. So I'm gonna move my die here. Ooh, my little seam ripper. I think this is like two weeks in a row I've had to pull out seams. Okay, but you want them to look nice. This is the sashing between it. This is a border. These are between the blocks are called sashing. Keep in mind the one in the center is a different green than the outside ones. So in our case, there's my blocks, the sashing is going to be white and all of the cornerstones are going to be purple because it matches the block on the outside, the shape on the outside, okay? All right, so now here's my big tip. We're gonna cut uh, sashing strips. 
So sashing strips, you, the pattern says you need to cut, cut five inch strips and five by one and a half inch strips, okay? There is a die for both of those things. So my tip for you is that when you're starting with your, um, if you're cutting sashing strips, cut the biggest size first, okay? So here is my five inch strip die, and we have lots of videos on how to cut strips, okay? It just has one section of five inches. So I just added a quarter of an inch on either side. So I just rough cut a five and a half inch strip, okay? And I lined it up parallel to that 90 degrees, so I make sure I'm cutting my, my big strip first. And our strip dies, you're gonna need a 10 by 24 cutting mat. I just dropped all sorts of things over there, Brock. Okay, and while I cut this, all of our strip dies, we have 18 sizes of strips, will fit through our Go and our Go Big Cutters. All right, what other colors are people making? Uh, so before we get to that, we've got some questions. We yes. have a bunch of questions just rolled in. So uh, Arlene would like to know, is there a way that she can make this, uh, in her words, gorgeous pattern without an AccuQuilt maker? Oh, what's the answer to that? No. No. No, this gorgeous pattern was written for AccuQuilt. Although, did you mention earlier that you could put it together with English paper pieces? No, with foundation oh, paper. foundation Yeah, which is like upside down and backwards. Oh, who would okay. want to do that? Yeah. All right, so now we have our five inch strip, okay? Then once you've cut your larger, wider strip. We're gonna come right here. Oh, I'm gonna do it this way, sorry guys. Um, my iron is still hot and I don't wanna cut myself or burn myself. Okay, now I'm gonna take my wider strip and now I can cut one and a half inch strips. I'm just gonna go back and forth across the die board. Brock, what do you think is better to cut the larger strip first? Uh, to cut it down to a more manageable size? Yes, and if you try to cut one and a half inch strips and then lay it on the five inch strip, it's just harder. So cut the big strip first, okay? And while we're cutting things, we need them for our cornerstone, so I have some purple here. Okay, look at us, multitasking. Okay, do we have more questions? Because that was a good question. Yeah, uh, Vicki would like to know, is there a way to figure out how much fabric to buy or use when you use a die for a quilt? Yes. So the pattern, every pattern that we have, our free patterns on our website, will tell you the fabric requirements. Um, but on our website, there's a reference called the fabric requirement chart. I'm so sorry to the people moderating the show today. It tells you how many half square triangles you can cut, you know, cut a four inch or a five inch strip and how many half square triangles from the four eight inch cube you can cut. It tells you, it goes through cube by cube of all the shapes and then how many shapes you can get out of a yard of fabric or a width of fabric. And when you're looking at a pattern to translate it, let's say in your pattern you have, we're making stuff up, 300 half square triangles, then you can go to our fabric requirement chart, pick the size cube you're using, and it will tell you how many shapes you get out of a yard of fabric, and then you can do math in your head to figure that out. Okay, that's a great question. That's a really great tool. Okay, now look. Ta -da, ta -da. Now I've cut perfect sashing strips. Okay, and I've cut perfect purple strips. Uh, do you like the Vikings? Can we like the Vikings? You know my brother-in-law is a big Vikings fan. I'm not so much. Okay. Although I have Justin Jefferson on a fantasy team, so I want him to score a lot of points. Our good friend Harrison Phillips is from Omaha. He plays for the Vikings now. Ooh. He used to play for the Buffalo Bills. All right, now I'm taking my strips and I'm turning them at 90 degrees so that I can cut squares with my one and a half inch strip die for those cornerstones, okay? And we have enough time that we're gonna sew some of those together. 
and show you how to make sashing. All right, Brock, tell us other colors people are loving. Uh, all right, so Deanna Nielsen uh, says hi from Lenox, South Dakota. Hello. Hi. Uh, and she would uh, definitely make a big red Husker quilt. So go big red. That's right. Uh, They're not playing Elise, this weekend. So Elise we'll... George uh, is going Carolina blue and white. Uh, as a Duke basketball fan, I'm not sure I can condone that color scheme. What are Duke's colors? Like a royal blue and black and white. Oh, okay. It's different shades of blue, right? It is shades of blue. Okay. Uh, Julie Higgins is a Saints fan, so she would go uh, black and gold and white. There you go. Okay, look at this. I've cut perfect sashing strips and perfect corner stones. My iron is still hot, so let's put some of these together. All right, let's start by um, sewing these two sections together. We're gonna sew it together, and then I'm gonna show you how to sew the corner stone strip, okay? So we're gonna start here. And in this case, I have a tendency to press to the center. That way it's gonna lay a little bit flatter. Sometimes, Brock, we say press to the dark side, which is one of my favorite things to say on May the 4th. All right, what else are people saying colors? Uh, so we had one more question here. Oh, good. Uh, from Liz asks, uh, she had a question about e using EQ8. Oh, okay. Uh, and she asks, can you explain about the extra software you need so that all the AccuQuilt dies are included in EQ8? Is that something you can buy from AccuQuilt? Uh, yes, so it's the AQ8 library, mm -hmm. and it's available on our website. And the blocks um, are updated for our Bob dies. Who is it that does that? We know who this is that does that. Thank you, Lori Miller. Thank you, Producer Joe. Um, she updates those once a year. So check it out. EQ8 allows you to take our dies and create a new pattern compared to, uh, to Go Quilt, what le which lets you take a current pattern and change the colorway. So make sure you understand that that's, that's what you're doing. Look at how cool this is. Ooh, sorry. Don't get on the mat. It will melt. All right. So now I'm going to press towards the center sashing. Give it a good press with my screaming hot iron here. Okay. So Pam, uh, Paulette would like to know, what is your go-to color? Go-to color in thread or fabric or? Yes. Thread, I was, um, I sew with this really ugly green because it just kind of melts into everything. It's an orophil color and yeah, I'll find out what it is. We'll put it on the comment section. Um, my go-to color of fabric, I would say I have more fabrics out of like hot pink. But I feel like that's because my I have a granddaughter, Oakley. Um, before Oakley, I, I love black and white quilts. I'm a really modern quilter. In fact, I thought about making this black and white with a red accent, because that would be cool. Okay, so now I've sewn my little square, okay, and my little cornerstone, I'm gonna add my other little sashing strip. I'm really excited. This is a total weekend project. Brock, I don't know what you're doing this weekend, but you could totally sew with me. Uh, as much as I would love that, I do have to work this weekend. Are you working? Yeah, I think I'm gonna be doing uh, the radio, radio show. Okay, he does Facebook Live, he does radios, he's a renaissance man, okay. Here we go. So now I've created my little sashing, and once again, I'm going to press wit towards the white. My iron is here. The reason I press towards the white is because in my block, sorry, in my block I press towards the white, and now my pieces will nest. Oh, look at that. Okay. So this, these pieces, 
were pressed to the outside, these were pressed to the inside. Now I can just sew it all together and it's gonna lock perfectly. Look at how fun that is. Okay, we're almost done. So Brock, do you have a few more colors? Yeah, so uh, Diane Marie Maloney Davis. That yeah. is so many names. DMMD. Okay. Uh, she would go with creams, coffees, and toffee colors. That sounds delightful. It sounds delicious. And also, okay, I have to say, I'm, appealing. I'm not a brown fan, but I am a coffee and a toffee fan of those colors. Cool. So, okay. Lindy, Lindy Connolly says she loves what you're doing and she might just copy you. Thank you. I do love this for winter. Um, yesterday, Brock, it was what, 100 degrees here? Uh, yeah, when I left the studio, my car temperature meter said 102. Yeah, and today it's, I don't know, 67 or something. It's beautiful. It's beautiful here in Nebraska. It's a top 10 day in Nebraska. And truly, there are only 10 days, so that are top 10. So I got a couple more questions here that just came in. Uh, okay. One was, so we just had that close-up shot of your sewing machine. And uh, Brenda asked, what are the red lines on your pressure foot? Oh, and, oh right here? And my pressure foot? Um, it's just to help me keep lined up with the edge of the fabric. And I have my walking foot engaged because this machine has a walking foot. But that's a great question. I didn't know you could see so close that you could do that. Yeah. And then uh, Deborah Schmidt has a question. Uh, do you not uh, backstitch on this block? Um, okay. <laughs> At home, I backstitch. This is not the machine I sew on every day, and I honestly, I have to think about how to backstitch, so normally I do, yes. You should. You just don't want to have to think too hard. I don't want to think too hard. Because <laughs> sometimes it's just too hard, Brock. It's just too hard. Okay? You would think I would know how to use this machine. I've been sewing on it for two years. All right, here we go. Look at this. When we talk about sashing and cornerstones, this is what it is. Ooh, don't forget the one in the middle, a different color if you're making this block. Look at how pretty that is. Do you like it, Brock? It's gorgeous. Good answer. All right, quilters, follow the pattern to add the large borders. Put batting between the quilt top and the backing, pin or baste. Quilt is desired and use your favorite binding method. Be sure to share your finished projects with us on all of our social media platforms. And again, this is a great weekend project. I think it would be great. Don't forget to join me and Erica on September 27th at 12 noon central time for a trunk show with new embroidery designs. We're getting ready for fall. Register on the event page for the chance to win prizes. Make sure you get your launch bundles of the Go Star of the East while they're still available, including the Go Block on Board Favorites 9-inch die bundle, which features six bob dies, two cutting mats, and help to make some of your favorite patterns. All right, Brock has a winner. He's going to announce a winner who wins the Star of the East die. Lucky duck. Yes, maestro. Drum roll, please. It is Linda V in Fairland, Indiana. Congratulations, Linda. See, Linda, now you know how to take it and sew it together. And remember, the lights go to the white, the darks go to the darker. I know, half square triangles, it's kind of a great one. Now, next week, we're gonna go a little bit batty. We're gonna talk about all kinds of batting to use, because that's a big question we get as from quilters of what kind of batting should I use? So we're gonna talk about batting. And then in the spirit of batting, we are going to do a hands-on tutorial on how to quilt as you go. Are you familiar with that, Brock? Quilt as you go? I am not. Well, next week you're gonna learn all about it because it's gonna be great. So be sure to go to the events page on our website for the chance to win prizes. All right, we'd like to thank all of our team today. We have had such a great day here with the Star of the East Eye. Offsite, we have Morgan and Katie and Lauren helping with the monitoring of all of our questions. In the studio, we have Justin and Joe and our good friend Greg. Thanks for helping with us today, Greg. And the amazing super duper Brock has been here. Thanks for co-hosting today.
had a great time. Hope you learned tons about sports. I'm Pam Heller reminding you at AccuQuote, we help you cut time so you can quote more. See you next week.